Hey everyone, Ava Paul here, and today we're going to be playing the demo for Sunken Location. And it's been developed, oh, no, no. this has been developed by Blamboozled, and you can find it over at Itch.io. I have a link down below, you can check it out. And yeah, so these are the people that were working on Frida's Pizza Hullabaloo, but I guess they're putting that game on hold until next year or something like that. I'm not really sure, that's what I saw on their Discord. But yeah, they came out with this. A little bit different. But uh yeah, why don't we give this a try and see what it's like? Wait, wait, wait. Before you start playing, I just want to say I only recommended playing this game series if you're 18 and up. I know some might believe that they're mature enough to play a game like this, but my team and I would prefer it if you were adult age. Yeah, I guess I am. This stems from the fact that the game includes a lot of strong topics. If you aren't of a mature enough age and mindset, then I don't know how that'll affect you. It also robot butts. Oh, it also it also robot butts. Okay. If you're younger than the age of 18, I ask you to please click out of the game now. Nope. There will be a lot of these topics like murder, blood, topics like suicide, sex, etc. But it's all for the advantage of communicating our story. Well, you are still there here. You are still... I'm having a time talking. Well, you are still here, so I'm guessing you just want to play. Welcome and enjoy. Yes, yes I do. What is your name? Max? No, we'll change that. There we go. That sounds right. Frida's Part 1, The Sunken Location. Alright, let's get on with it. It is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. William Shakespeare. I always took that as, in whatever crazy shithole we call this life, I need to carve out my path, my tunnel road. To carve our place into the world, a place of belonging. I guess that's all most people want, a place of belonging. I just want that place where I belong. Even though it's only been two years and some change, I still can't remember some things, other Topics are just hard to bring up, remember. Maybe I just don't want to remember, or maybe I did go crazy like they said. Am I crazy? Mm, sometimes. How would I know if I was? Even though they detailed what happened, and the witnesses say they suspect the suspect looked akin to me, I don't remember a single thing. All I remember was the screaming when the buh. The tires of the car screech hard against the ground, pulling the car to a complete stop. We're here. Ah, I forgot. I guess I'm trying to hold that destiny currently, or at least change it. What seems laid out for my future, or lack thereof, isn't something I want to think about right now. Right now, I'm in the car with this deranged psycho. Which is rich coming from me. Alright, so remember the plan, right? Of course, there's no way I would forget it. Alright, just to be safe, we say what you have to do. Take a quick sigh before speaking. I need to find a way inside of there, look around, look for any animatronics that could have been around during the incident. Then, I stick this hard drive in there, hopefully gaining information about the day because of it. Then, for the next few days, I can't contact you, and I'm still confused about why I can't. Yeah, why? Her face turns into a sort of questioning look to herself, before turning back to you. Your trial is... Weird. This whole case is weird. Things don't match up, and some processes are being skipped entirely. There's someone intentionally trying to get you to take the fall for whatever this is. She looks around to the pitch black darkness outside of the car. For whatever reason, I can't shake the feeling someone is watching me, watching us, following us. We have to lay low until the trial goes over. Understand? You nod your head in response to her question. I understand. Goodbye, Val. Thank you for believing in me. A small smile creeps onto her face. I know what it's like to have people not believe you on something you swear it's true. Call it dumb, but I have a feeling you didn't do those things you were accused of. Well, I would hope not. Kind of crazy, right? To sit in the car with someone who's accused of something so crazy, so deranged? Here she goes. She starts to get closer. I must be crazy, right? Yes. 
She says lightly as her breath clashes against your neck. And it looks like some spit. Ah. Fuck, encounters like this have been happening way too much lately. I think she's turned on by the fact that may be this dangerous killer. She knows I didn't, so what am I? Ugh. She knows I didn't, so what I'm being convicted of. But some side of her likes the danger accumulated of working with me. Her warm breath runs rampant on your neck, and in turn, your body reacts. Your member started to respond in suit. No words are spoken. It seems as if she's completely entranced with you. Her hand moves from your chest down towards your pants. Hey, hey, hey. You're breathing hard. While she has made some sly advances towards you, this one has to be the most direct. You aren't used to this. You weren't the fittest guy around before, but as the trial went on, you took time to work towards a look you'd be proud of. That look seems to be attracting your associate here. Shoot. I gotta stop this. She's getting closer. If our clothes come off, I might not be able to stop myself. Take a deep breath and grasp her hand quickly. Even though I'd like to, there's a time and a place for these things. Like right now? She looks at you a bit confused for a second. This confused look turned into an embarrassed one. Right. She pulled away, and for a moment, an awkward silence ensured. You look back at her only for a second, studying her nervous, embarrassed face. She's beautiful. Before, I dream of doing it with someone like her, but I have other things to focus on right now. Plush, she's a bit loco. Never stick your dick in crazy. Amen, brother. I'll contact you if I find anything. You exit out of your car, setting your eyes on the establishment in front of you. Yeah, it's seen better days. Although, no, no. Sticking your dick in crazy, I guess it all depends. I mean, like the game In Heat. There's Poppy. She's crazy. Yeah, I'm sticking in there. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. So this is it. It looks different from what I last remember. You take a few steps to get closer to the restaurant, but your body starts pulling out, uh, pulling out a feeling, sort of like the feeling you get when you're on a roller coaster. That dropping feeling, or somewhat like butterflies in your stomach, but ten times worse. As my body remembers what happens somewhat, your legs starts to shake as you fight through the feeling and walk up to the door. Looking inside, through the glass, you can make out a few tables, but due to the absence of light, you are only able to see a few feet in front of you. As you are examining the inside through the stained glass, you realize that the doorknob won't turn. Shit, the door is locked. I hadn't thought about that part. Taking a step back, you examine the outside of the establishment to find something to open the door. You took out the door as your face pressed against the glass. Even though you heaved and tugged the door for a minute straight, it didn't budge. Huff, huff. You let out two heavy breaths, using all your strength to get the immovable door open. It's like the door was a tungsten lock. I'll have to look around for a key, but it's been two years. Where the hell would a key be? Well, just standing here won't help me. Oh, I have to do something now? Okay, uh, first things first. Let's give a save. There we go. Uh, that hole? No. Here's a window. I need to check the door first. Oh, I mean the door I just did. Took the door handle and click. It won't budge. Shit, maybe there's a key around here. Hmm, maybe in a barrel? No, how about the dumpster? Nothing except trash here. Maybe. You kicked the garbage bag away. Really? There's a key under the gar- What? Why would the key be underneath a bag of garbage? You pick up the key and stash it in your pocket. Wait, why was there just a key? I- Fuck it, just take the win. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, I have some sort of key. All right, moment of truth. Moment of truth. The key slides into the lock with ease, and with turning it, the door opens. As the moonlight pours into the establishment, you need to give your eyes a second to adjust to the environment around you. There we go. Cobwebs all around. The place looked like it hadn't been, hadn't had anyone here in years. So this is it. Even though you were just 
even though you were here, oh my god, my blah, 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 I can't just talk right. Even though you were just here two years ago, not a thought or memory immediately came into mind. It's like this place is foreign. I can't believe I came here almost every day. You walked over to what seemed to be the seating area for the building. The interior is bland. This whole place is giving me the creeps. You run your finger across one of the booths, and this action picked up a lost of pick up a lost of you mean lots of dust, really showing the place's age. Wait a minute. I'm just trying to figure out for a second here. If this is gonna be like adult themed animatronics, which I'm assuming there would be. What kind of establishment is this? There's like high chairs right in the corner. What? Why would they have high chairs? You're going to bring kids to a place with like sexy animatron? I don't know why, but whatever. You just off a seat and sit down in one of the booths. Looking around, even though it was open and supposedly thriving a year ago, the place kept an 80s to 90s look with the robot designs contrasting these old values. That's probably why so many became interested in the place. These places have become popular. Animatronic industry started booming in the 80s. There was that incident back in 87 that many talked about, but even still, the industry started to boom. These places became an obvious cash cow. Companies fighting against each other. Who could make better animatronics and garner the most success? Horror houses, pizzerias, amusement parks, etc. were all open up due to the success of Freddy's, even though it closed down shortly after its release. While there are a few, they garner many visitors. I have to admit, I like these places as well. The robots are so lifelike and entertaining, they just have to see it once. There's only seven or so establishments that harbor the animatronics, but some even come out of the states to see them. Even still, it's nice just to get off your phone and enjoy some entertainment. There's that new one opening up a few states over. Frida's, I think. I forgot what it was about, but it looks like they're hand headlining new robots. I might have to check it out if I'm not, well, in jail or on death row. You run your finger across one of the booths and take action, and this action picked up a lost of dust, really showing the place. Wait, we just went through that one. I still wonder how I'm so calm about this. Maybe the realism of the situation hasn't hit me. If I don't think about it as much, it isn't so crushing. I have no family, and the friends I did have are gone now. A tear almost escapes your eye, but you won't let it. You blink it away and clear your throat. Putting your problems in a box and pushing it down isn't the best solution. Hey, that's one of the best solutions there are. Just the one that helps you avoid the problem for now. Most because you have bigger ones. It's time to move on. Alright. You start your trek down the hallways. The broken interior of the place shows more vividly down these stretches. Of course, hallways like these would be more broken up than more attended to areas like the main room. The hallway was dirty, clearly feeling more of the effects of unkeptness and overall abandonment. Not wanting to focus on the creepy scene around you, you focus on your steps and keep your head forward. Tap, tap, tap. No other sound but the sound of your feet coming down against the ground could be heard. Tap, tap, tap. No air running, no random bugs or birds chirping, just the tapping of your shoes. Oh my god again. The onset of creepiness set back in as well as the subtle quickening rise to your heartbeat. More taps. You started walking with haste, a general onset of fear rose within you. A walk to a jog, a jog to a run. A run to a sprint. Tap, 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 tap. The room around you changed. Walls lengthening, floors changing, the whole corridor expanding. Yep, I guess we are crazy. You're now running at full speed down the ever-extending hallway. But no matter how fast you ran, and however much ground you thought you were covering with this speed, you ended up not moving. Or, the hallway was so long that any ground you did cover became trivial in a sense. It felt like you weren't even moving, even though you were breaking into a full sprint. You weren't much even to push out a you weren't much even to push out a thought about the situation, let alone a witty remark. The emotion of fear being the only thing on your mind. You kept up the pace for a while, the subtle onset of fear being induced within you. 
You continue your run for your life with no real goal in your mind until... Crack. Do you hit a wall? Oh, you gotta be kidding. The ground below you cracks and breaks open. You try to get up and run, but the brake follows you. You try to move your legs, but it's no use. You fall into the depths of the abandoned pizzeria. Pure terror washes over you as flashes of your life start to come to you. Dear God, am I going to die? You start to pray to God, making wishes that this won't be it. This can't be it. The thought of dread washes over you, your 18 years of life washing over your eyes. Too many images to process at once. Eh, you're only 18, it's not that many. The opportunity is you let go to waste. Situations where you could have stopped being such a pussy and let people walk all over you. Things you've regretted. Things you want to ch Oof. All thoughts came to a stop as your body collides with a mound of dirt, knocking the air out of your lungs, but hey, you're alive. You start taking deep breaths of air to refill what was forced out of you with the impact. The taking in of too much is what causes you to cough. I would think it'd be like all the dirt kicked up from you falling, getting in your lungs. Taking deep breaths in and out, you finally recover. Your eyes adapt to the dark somewhat quickly. You are underground, pretty far underground. This dress seems to be blocking something. Crumbles? You notice that a large piece of flooring came loose. What the? Just then, a pillar comes loose, starts barreling down the hole. You look up. The light that shined down the hole was now gone. The only thing evident was the pillar smacking against the sides of the hole you created as it fell faster and faster. The large pillar made your heart race. Holy shit, it's gonna kill me. I have to... Is that a door? I have to try to get inside. Wait. Wait, what's this bar? Keep going. What the hell is this bar doing? I don't get it. Alright, uh, slam your foot into the hope. Oh. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> Alright, so the game keeps freezing on me. <laughs> or, well, not freezing, but it keeps closing down. So, I'm not really sure what's going on. But I managed to get a little bit farther. I just gotta keep going through this. Try and enter a code. The pillars descend quickly above you. You try to quickly pull the dirt. Oh, what, what? Dead end one. What the? Was that it? All right. So I can't really like read what they want me to because of a stupid time limit. No, it's dead end. That's all we get. Dead end. Almost there. Key code beside it. What do I do? Slam into it. Hey, look, I managed to get farther. One, because the door shut immediately behind you. Secondly, you were breathing so hard that you might have a heart attack. You know what? That was a good time to save again. Now that we're past that. Seriously, dude, calm down. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Obviously, your body tried to. Your body tired to the point of exhaustion. You, five seconds ago, digging in dirt so that you wouldn't have been crushed by a pillar. You, now, laying on a cold floor. You pass out. Aww. The scent is sweet. The day is bright. Two children are playing together. In a yard, it seems. They are having so much fun together. They seem close. The pair played every day. That is, until one stopped coming to the yard to play. The child was sad. A car pulled up. Man stepped out during the wee hours of the day. He offered his hand to the lonely child. Uh-oh, his purple guy. You... I mean, why? You miss your friend, don't you, little one? The child, the lonely child, lightly shook his head. The man offered, Well, I know where your friend is. Would you like to go see him? Stars lit up in the child's eyes as he realized he'd be able to see the friend he missed so intensely. He shook his head up and down in agreement. Well, come on in. Missing. Timothy Bauer, 12101. Missing, James Orkin, 211. Gah, you wake up on the floor of an office? It seems to be like. Now, wait a minute. Isn't this Frida's? 
It looks like the same picture as Frida. Are we in the same place or no? I can't tell. Oh, good time to save, I guess. Dry shifted around the room. He looked towards the monitors. Computer and mouse pad. River Designs Room had a bad obsession with... You pick up the mouse pad. Bears with titties. Fucking weirdo. Take a quick glance around the room. Making sure you were alone. Do it or don't do it. Ah, I'm going to save again. Fuck yeah. Who knows what's going to happen. Do it. You honk the busty mouse pad's titties. That was somewhat refreshing. You put the mouse pad down and just marvel at the room in front of you. Where the hell am I? You ask yourself once again. A medium-sized sense of panic sets in as you realize that you are trapped underground and you only know an exit just sealed behind you. you quickly pull out your phone and... God fucking damn it. Sorry, God. I have no bars. You yell partially because you're in disbelief and in shock. Your breath picks up as the idea of being trapped down here flashes into your head. Oh, God. Oh, God. You gripe across the floor and your neck tightly. Wait. You grip the... Oh, you grip the cross on your neck tightly. Oh, my God. Gaining some type of comfort from this. Your heartbeat slows down as you pull yourself away from having a panic attack. Think. Think. Well, I came to an entrance. The keypad was on the outside door, so it had to be an entrance. That means there's an exit. S somewhere. You give yourself a mental pat on the back for the idea. You scan the room again and spot the open door. Maybe you could explore. Yes, I could explore. Yeah, I'll just save. But what else is there? Do I have to go to the door? Fine. You walk outside of the room that you assume to be some sort of security office. Why the hell someone would need to have security down here was a question you didn't have an answer to. It was also a question that wasn't important right now. The only thing in your mind was getting the hell out of here. What the hell is this place? It was a question that was raised more as you saw more and more of this hidden establishment. But you purposely came here to get answers. Why are you trying to escape now? The white and black tile shines somehow back at you. All you had to go off was to navigate go off to navigate this place was the office light that bounced off those tiles. Okay, it's a hallway. It's normal. Alright. There was some black part towards the end of the hallway. Instinctively, you walk towards it. What do you do? I only have one option. I guess we'll go towards it. You walk towards it and hit the wall. Oof. What the hell? You hold your hands out, and you're met with some black, runny, but somehow malleable goo. It's a liquid, but still somehow solidified or solidified into a wall-like structure. What the? What is this? You keep running your hand through it, but a slow, sharp pain builds up until... Ow. You're shocked by the wall. But this wasn't a regular shock. It was like it shocked your insides. Shake your hand. Where the shock impacted landed. Holy shit. What the fuck was that? It was like I was being electrocutes <laughs> all over my body for just a moment. Electrocutes. Looking up. Looking up in the goo and confu- Looking up and the goo in con Oh my god. Not only can I not talk right, but the- Some of the dialogue here is just messing with me. For some reason, you reach out to it again, and it- Stretches out to you and envelops your hand and pulls you closer. You should be alarmed. You should be screaming. But for some reason, you feel calm as it envelops your whole body and you are absorbed. No thoughts. Absolute nothingness. You feel calm and then, out of nowhere, you are filled with foreign emotions. Anger, sadness, hatred. Too many emotions to name. It all infects you at once. Then suddenly, you spat out into the darkness. The hallway you entered is behind you, and the black goo is gone? What? What just... You had no words for what you just felt. As quick as you felt it, it took the same amount of time for it to pass. I... You can't even remember what just happened. So you just take a stand. The room you were standing in is pitch black. You try and feel around for your phone, but alas, it seems to have disappeared. Shit, where's my phone? You ask yourself as you feel around violently in your pockets. It's gone. How? 
feeling around violently in your pockets. That's kind of weird. You try to get that last thought out, but you can't. A music box interrupts you. A tune starts to play. It echoes throughout the confined space, but somehow still rings in your ear loudly. The music deafens all sense of thought and independence. You aren't even able to think. Your body just moves. You take a step, then another, and then another. You walk to the box's distracting and controlling tune. Hey! It's an anima uh, endoskeleton. What is that now? Something appears in the darkness. Even though you feel like you are standing in a void, you are just able to see it fine. What should you do then? Well, I have no option. I am going to have to reach out to it, I guess. Really? I... Okay. You reach out towards the skeleton of what seemed to be a robot. Its cold metal exterior clashes with the warmth of your hand. You aren't many on thoughts right now, but this thing feels empty. Not like physically, but on a deeper level. What is it doing in this place? Now may not be the time for questions. Maybe it's off. Just then you instinctively pulled your hand back, away from whatever that thing is. It jolted its head around in response to your touch. Maybe touching the random metal skeleton was the best choice to make. Maybe touching the random metal skeleton was the best choice to make. Hmm. Okay. The endoskeleton's eyes glowed a bright red. You could tell its long, viewing gaze is set upon you. In that moment, you are given control of your body. Motions, control, and thought were all given back to you. Holy shit, I need to... You turn and try to run. The situation's intensity catches up to you, but... Its cold, metallic hand latches around yours, crushing it under its grasp. You tilt your head back as you scream in pain. Your brain is bouncing around as it sends signals of pain throughout your body. But mainly into the crumbled mess of what seems to be your hand. But the robot is still holding. The robot pulling its arm back. Sections of your skin are coming undone. Showing bone and excreting blood. Your break quickened and pain breaths escape your body. You try to form words to plead for it not to do what it's about to do. Wait, please don't. Ooh. That sucks. Blood pours out from your arm, it seeping into your shirt, starting to make a puddle around you. You continue to scream out of pure agony, the broken bone from your arm sticking out from what was left of it, blood spurting out on the floor, a good portion ending up on your clothes. Your senses start to slow as you continue screaming. No thoughts were running through your mind because of how unbearable the pain was. You continue on screaming, but it grew quieter and quieter as the seconds passed, and the puddle around you grew. You realize that screaming is most likely futile, even as a last ditch to retaliate against its own against your own passing, and you slowly start to pass out. Call for help with your last moments come Yeah, sure. I need to fight. Call for help. Somebody, please, please help me. You say this plea weakly, but all you can muster with this amount of blood gushing out of you. Please save me. Please. It can't end here. It can't. And with that, you drift in unconsciousness once again. Mind and body, both one, floating as if they weigh nothing. Floating without a single care in the world. Nothing to stop them. Nothing to hold them down. Nothing to keep them tethered. Like a balloon, one of the most free things in the world. The only time you see a balloon stationary is when something or someone is actively keeping it there. When let free, with nothing to bother them, they float without a care, bothering no one with their newfound freedom. For sure, we all want to float away in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, but when a balloon gets high enough, they just pop anyway. Most of the things keeping us tethered are bad memories, emotions, and unfinished problems. What's keeping you tethered? Uh, my past? Ah, the past. More specifically, your past. You can't seem to remember, correct? Hmm, I have a little hint for you to help you with that. Your past will always be your past. You hide from it or run from it because it will find you and it will catch up to you. Trust me, friend. It's catching up to you faster than you think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure since I'm dying. Oh, it seems like she's pulling me back. But don't worry, 
We'll see each other soon. Really soon. Bye bye now. Okay. Mm. A smell of hot metal filled your nose. A small subscript of burnt meat. Subscript. You slowly blinked your eyes open. Hmm. Your senses slowly come to you. You feel weak in a way. Even blinking felt like a lot to do. Am I alive? A bit disbelieved at the fact that you are still alive and somewhat well. You weren't very able to feel your body, but still very much thankful. I'm alive. Holy shit. How am I? How did I? What was? Your large mix of thoughts are interrupted by what sounded to be a door being banged on. Yeah, we'll turn our head. Hey! It's alright, lassie. Just hold on. Just hold on. They give up after a while. Hmm, I'm trying, but there's too many. Your eyes fixate over the two figures, leaning against the not-so-stable-looking door. It looks like they've seen better days. They're going to... The banging stopped. Just like that? You and the pair all stand there for a second. You notice that the, what looked to be a chicken, duck, thing's eyes start darting around. The red foxes seemingly stopped. Then, footsteps arose, and slowly got farther and farther away from the door, until they were too far to hear. The pair turned their heads to look at each other, and slowly back away from the doors. They stand still for another moment to make sure no footsteps could be heard again. After the moment passes, the chicken notices you are awake. So it proceeds to walk up to you after exclaiming her discovery to her friend. The pair of humanoid things begin to look at you questioningly. Questioningly? Or I think it should be questionably before turning back towards each other. The yellow one began to carefully move towards you. You know, without all the panicking, he looks different compared to us. The lad looks very squishy, Nina. As if to test if the red fox's observations were true, the chicken began to poke at you. Whoa, you were right. You gotta come feel this. Hmm, all right, lassie, if you say so. After fighting with herself for a moment, the fox cautiously moves closer to you. The pair start to poke all around you, and your fear and confusion start to turn to annoyment. Poke, poke, pokey poo. Stop. Surprised at your sudden burst of anger, the pair immediately backed up. The chicken, duck, quickly bowed her head to you. Now, I don't know. If you had these, like, giant animatronic looking things just poking I don't think you would be snapping at them telling them to stop I think you'd be more like uh please <laughs> that's just what I'm thinking sorry squishy guy you take a deep breath in and out these two seemed like somewhat scary robots before but now they seem like annoying sisters suddenly they don't seem so terrifying alright could could you both tell me where I am the robotic humanoids looked at each other again in confusion. Oh wow, Foxy's got some, or well, whatever her name is, got some muscly arms. Hmm? Where, uh, here? That's a good answer. I, I don't know what to do with that information. Just go with it. You take a seat back down on the table you woke up on, visibly shaken. Take another deep breath. Okay, I just need to calm down. Take another deep breath. Deep breaths. Count to ten. You're glad you remembered the exercises your therapist recommended. Though, you don't think this is what she thought they'd be used for. I think the most important thing would be to look down at your hand that came off. I'm just saying. You might want to see if it's there still. Or what's going on. I was topside with Val. I came here to get information from one of the old animatronics. Then, then I was here. Now my arm is... You try to remember what happened to your arm, but a small ringing came to your ear. The ringing of a music box. This gives an onset of a memory. The sun is bright, the heat is all-consuming. Looking at your friend, whose appearance eludes you, you comfort them as tears seep into their eyes. Hey, calm down. I'm sorry, okay? I didn't mean to. 
Clasping your friend's shoulder, they swiftly slapped it away. With cheeks tomato red, the friend speaks back. You broke my toy. Daddy gave it to me and it's ruined. You look back at them with worry as snot starts to drip down their nose. It isn't a pretty sight. Well, well, it's not my fault. You were shoving it in my face. Your friend starts crying louder. It's too. You hit it and you broke it. You slapped it and broke it. Turning away, you'd look back down at the broken toy. Its limbs skewered like a mangled corpse. The plastic gleamed in the light of the evening sun. You were starting to feel a bit guilty. Kneeling down, you grabbed all the parts and looked at them with worry. Just then, a spark of genius coursed through your brain. Before you could even speak a word, your friend would snatch them from your hand and turn their back on you. Don't touch her, she's mine. Peering over her shoulder, you spoke out in desperation. Wait, give it back. No, I don't want to play with you anymore. You'd end up fighting again as you struggle to snatch the toy away and they struggle to keep it away from you. Give it. No, no, no. You're only going to make it worse, sir. In the heat of the moment, your friend would shove you away, falling on your butt on the hard concrete floor. They would look back at you with worry as you got up. Sharing a moment of silence, you would finally speak up. I'm sorry for breaking your toy, but I can fix it. I can make it good again. Your friend stepped back slightly. It was obvious to see they were skeptical. Looking down at the warm sidewalk in defeat, you'd let out a loud sigh. As you were about to raise your head, your friend's hands would come into sight. Still holding onto the dismantled toy, they would speak up. I'm sorry for being mean to you. Laying out a pleased smile, you would grab the pieces and sit on the side of the road with them. You'd spend the rest of the day putting the toy back together. It wasn't really all that difficult. All the pieces would pop right back in without a care in the world. As the sun was beginning to fade away, you gave them back their toy. Your friend would clasp it firmly before pushing it against the last mighty rays of the sun. See? It's fixed. Now your dad won't get angry. You gave out a cheeky smile as your friend looked back at you with a smile of their own. Yeah. The two of you would laugh and help each other up, noticing how late it had gotten. You both would hurry home, but not before waving goodbye. As you looked back, your friend would wave at you from a distance. Holding up the toy, they would make it wave too, letting out a soft chuckle as you would wave back before running down the street to go back home. You weren't able to remember this area, but you can also remember the voices, the feeling, small details about those days come to you. I was here before. But, um, God, it's cold. Lassie, for the last time, you have to give it some time to warm up, or else it'll shock your whole system. <sighs> oh, I think the new guy's awake. Hey, we are taking a shower? We read about it. It feels really good. You should try it. These two are the only ones working, so you can jump in with me or Vixie. Did they just ask me to shower with them? I... Christ, so many things I have been going through my head since I dropped here. Even farther back, since the case. Maybe a hot shower wouldn't be so bad. Those two seem to be nice enough anyway. They even, well, looks like maybe they patched up my arm. You look a bit longingly at your, longingly at, longingly? At your arm, even though it's gone. <laughs> well, that's great. You can almost feel it. Like you're still moving your hand and fingers. The sensations rising up to your brain, but yet and still, having nothing to put those commands out to. Whatever, I just want to stop thinking for the moment, and I just want to feel. Looks like I have a choice. Who should I shower with? Oh, we actually, uh, well, I guess this is a good time to save now. Boop. We turn. We're missing an, a hand. Oh, we're missing an arm. And, uh, the, what is her name? I don't even remember. She's missing an arm. We'll choose her. Uh, but, Blam? Who's Blam? Sorry, boys. That's the end of the day. Oh, give us feedback and tell us what you think. Okay. I know this is very different from the 
Fidas, you know, but have some faith in me when I say the new story we're setting up is one you'll enjoy. The next update is already being worked on. Things will change, and depending on your feedback, they change for the better. Any questions or comments, just come on to the Discord or leave it on our itch or game jolt. Bye bye now. All right, so that was uh, the demo for the sunken location. Very different. I'm not quite sure why we're seeing characters of Frida's when it's showing like completely different characters here uh, on the menu screen. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> That's very strange. And I thought they were putting the Frida's game on hold while they did this one, but I guess it's the same game. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to see where the story's going to go. Kind of interesting. Although, a lot of the talking, blah, 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 messes up my mouth. Especially when a lot of the dialogue is just kind of weird at times. It's nothing against the developer. Uh, maybe, you know, English isn't their first language. I'm not really sure. Uh, great game. And I like the other one, the previous one they did. So, I'm going to... I'll play this again when there's another update. But on that note, you'll have yourselves a good one. And I will see you... Later.